I have to thank Theodore on our debate board for showing me this. I thought it was pretty interesting. A little while back, NASA sent a bunch of young college students up into a zero-g plane to do an experiment and show us what happens to a density tower in zero-g. I'll let you see that for yourself here, and then I'll let you know what stands out to me about all of this. All right, so with zero-g planes, the planes take you up and drop you. And that was the first drop. Here he has three liquids. The bottom one is FC-72, which is supposed to be some kind of spacecraft coolant. When I first heard him say it, I thought I heard him say Epstein-72. And that made me do a double take. You have FC-72, water, and vegetable oil. Okay. It is labeled right there on the bottle, FC-72, but it still has me raising an eyebrow here as to why they specifically chose that over a common household item like they did with the water and the vegetable oil. People typically don't have spacecraft coolant laying around in the garage. There are plenty of other liquids they could have chosen from, such as corn syrup. As I think about that, I find myself looking around and I don't see a control for the experiment anywhere. I have no idea how long it takes for those liquids to separate under normal conditions. Now let's go take a look at that second drop. So they are trying to make a point here that it is not separating out. But did you notice how much he keeps shaking the bottle during the drop time? Now here's the third drop. And that was it. They only showed those three drops. And it seems their primary objective was to show that the liquids did not separate during the freefall. Having him hold the bottle wasn't the best way to carry out the experiment. It would have been better to have him fasten it to something. But then again, NASA is behind this. So perhaps that was intentional foul play. Okay. So what's the big deal in all this? Last time we talked about the bowling ball and the feather, and about how they fell to the floor at the same time in the vacuum chamber. Based on that observation, after shaking up the liquids, one shouldn't expect the liquids to separate out while falling, because that would show one thing falling faster than another thing, rather than both of them falling at the same rate. That isn't really a big deal, right? On the other hand, if the liquids did separate well in freefall, I think that'd be a much bigger deal. Perhaps that might even be something that NASA wants to hide. This warrants the need to go back and take a closer look at this. We have FC-72, water, and vegetable oil. And as soon as we hit zero, as soon as we go into microgravity, well, you'll see. Shake, shake, shake. Hold it from 
kind of ruining the experiment there, buddy. Okay, that was pretty sweet. I could see some major clumping and movement going on there. And just as something was starting to happen, the guy shook it up again before the drop was even complete. And please notice how at the end of the drop, the vegetable oil and the water never fully separated out like the FC-72 stuff has. Not separating at all. Emphasizing what they want you to see right there. Now notice how before the second drop even happened, even after going through hypergravity, the vegetable oil and the water still haven't fully separated out. Also notice how our mid-drop results look significantly different than they did on the first drop, where the liquids look like blobs in a lava lamp. That definitely wasn't going on this time. That leads me to wonder what changed between the first drop and the second drop. That may have something to do with the vegetable oil and the water remaining mixed together. Perhaps they're not even really using vegetable oil here. Alright, now that's looking a lot more separated. Zero. And now it's looking like a lava lamp again. Only he doesn't look very happy. Feels like the pump's still working. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool swirling in there. Interesting. Now I think we should set some proper expectations and show you how long it takes water and vegetable oil to separate under normal conditions. Hi, I'm Melody and Kyle is my dad. Well, I'm gonna... Well, this is water. And this is vegetable oil. And I'm gonna see how fast it separates from the water. I don't know if this will fall. A little longer than I was expecting. Me too. That's science. It's all about learning, right? Mm All right, well, I think that's pretty separated now. Yeah. Fascinating. Thank you. Wow. I've got to say, I was actually quite surprised that they didn't separate out really quickly. With that, I think that actually confirms the fact that they really did use vegetable oil. However, if they knew in advance how long it takes for vegetable oil and water to separate, why would they use that in their video, 
and make a big deal about them not separating in that time. They're trying to play a trick on us. That most certainly appears to be the case, which is why they didn't show us the control experiment. This video is brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Thank you for watching.